All right, uh, let's take a look at problem eight. So in problem eight, I ask you to calculate um, the eccentric factor of water uh, using the steam tables. And what I want you to do here is to try and make the connection um, in terms of what the eccentric factor actually is. All right, so ultimately when we go to use a cubic equation of state, we'll need to look up TC, PC, and omega for your fluid of interest. All of them are um, tabulated in uh, appendix A. Um, so you have an idea already of what your critical properties are. Um, now I want to try and cement um, exactly what uh, omega is. Okay. Uh, and so before we read the problem statement, I will apologize in advance for my misspelling of compounds. Um, we'll have to make sure we, we fix that. Okay. Um, but anyways, from the appendix, uh, so this is appendix A, critical properties of selected compounds in the back of the text. The critical temperature and pressure of water um, are that. So temperature in Kelvin and pressure in bars. Using the steam tables, calculate the eccentric factor of water. And then how does this value compare uh, to that reported in the back of the book? Okay, so again, um, what we're getting at, so if I look at appendix A, so this will be my go-to when I go to use a cubic equation of state. Um, for a given fluid, I can readily look up TC, PC, and omega, um, which I'll need uh, to perform a calculation with you know, SRK or Peng robinson equation of state. Okay. So if I go to the the very last entry, so I find water, right, and I could read off uh, TC uh, and PC, temperature in Kelvin, pressure in bar, and then this last entry is, is omega. Okay, and, but in the problem, I ask you to go in and calculate it using uh, the steam tables and compare to that value that's tabulated um, just to, you know, again, uh, make that connection. So in terms of calculating uh, eccentric factor, um, so this is uh, slide nine from our second set of notes for chapter two. Um, and here we, we provide the definition um, of omega uh, eccentric factor. So omega is defined as negative one minus log base 10 uh, reduced saturation pressure at a reduced temperature of 0.7. All right, so now remember if I have a single component two-phase system, I have a single degree of freedom. So I need only specify a single intensive variable at which point the state of my system is, is fixed. Okay, so here, essentially you could think of it as you specify temperature, which is gonna be a reduced temperature of 0.7. Uh, you pin down temperature um, and then, so, ah, and so here we're at saturation two. So we talk about saturation pressure, so we have vapor liquid coexistence. So if I pin down temperature, uh, then pressure is it's fixed, it's specified. All right, so you're given the critical temperature of, of water in Kelvin. So remember, reduced temperature is nothing more than my actual temperature divided by my critical temperature. Both will be in absolute units. So um, in order to you know calculate omega, the first thing I need to do is, one, I need to figure out my actual temperature. So if, again, I know the critical temperature of water and I know I want to reduce temperature of 0.7, then my actual temperature of interest will be 0.7 times my critical temperature. Okay, so I go ahead and I calculate uh, the actual temperature um, of water at a reduced temperature of 0.7, and I'll get a number in Kelvin, since I'm given the critical temperature in Kelvin. Um, and then I know to work with the steam tables, I'm going to have to convert that to degree C. Okay, so then what I'll do is, so I'm going to go now over to my steam tables, which I thought were open here. Yep, here they are. Okay, so that was Appendix A. Okay, now if I look at um, Appendix E, my steam tables, the first one's for saturated steam. All right, so if I calculate my actual temperature um, of, of water at a reduced temperature of 0.7 and convert degree, to degree C, I'm going to look through this first column to try and find uh, that temperature. Okay, and so then once I locate that temperature, um, I can then just read off uh, pressure from the next column, All right? And it may be that you need to interpolate between uh, two rows, okay? But the idea being then um, is if I read off my pressure, okay, that'll be an actual pressure in bars that I read from the steam tables. Um, I then need to divide that by the critical temperature to convert it to a reduced uh, saturation pressure. All right, so that'll be the reduced saturation pressure. Um, so that pressure I just read off divided by the critical pressure. 
um, that'll be my reduced saturation pressure at a reduced temperature of 0.7. And so then once I obtain that from the steam tables, omega is just negative 1 minus log base 10 of that number, right? I emphasize log base 10, not natural log. Okay, so um, you can use that to uh, calculate omega, and then you would just compare it to the omega that's provided uh, in the back of the book. Okay, um, and so that's it for, for problem eight. Okay, so you know, goal here is just to try and make the connection of exactly what omega is when you go and you look it up in the back of the, the text in Appendix A for use later on, uh, essentially for our equations of state, but um, also as this, you know, in this chapter. Um, when dealing with the Lee-Kessler tables. Okay, hopefully um, that helps.